All right, guys, we got more ReZero drama. And this time it's called Zero Depth of Personality Smuggle on a Bad Take on ReZero. And the origin of this relates to this tweet here. Giguk had a tweet saying, I'm looking for your hottest anime takes, right? Give me your tweets. And I respect her for putting her thought out there and not deleting it. She's getting absolutely fucking cooked. It is, the, if you look at the amount of replies compared to the likes and the impressions that this has gotten, Oh my god, it is looking bad. But basically she said, ReZero is one of the worst animes ever that I sat through. And you know what? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, right? You know, entertainment, it's all subjective. Some people enjoy stuff that you don't enjoy, right? Some people don't enjoy stuff that you do enjoy. And as long as the logic makes sense, I'm perfectly fine with it, right? At least just make it make sense. But when she says, when a main protagonist has this zero depth of personality and with the constant resets, listen. That part already, it's like, I don't think you understand this show. Season 1 alone has shown us that Natsuki Subaru and what Tape is doing with this main character of an isekai, it is the deepest, most complex character that I've ever seen in storytelling for an isekai anime that I've personally seen. And the next person that comes close to that is like Mushoku Tensei Rudius. These two shows really goes into the psyches of what a neat, a person that's a shut in all their faults, all the things that they fucked up on in their back home life, and how that kind of culminates in this new world and the challenges that have to go through and the growth that is established, right? Natsuki Subaru, this egotistical, prideful, arrogant motherfucker that's accomplished nothing but is constantly in the shadows of his father therefore he acts out in a way that is super arrogant when he has not accomplished anything he acts selfless but it's always in a selfish way trying to look like a better person he wants to do better for amelia right he says he's doing this for amelia but at the end of the day he meant to do it for himself and then at the end of season one after all that you know suffering and punishment and understanding what he has to do he realizes that yeah at the end of the day I did want to do it for myself, but I still want to be by your side. And that's like tremendous growth. You cannot tell me genuinely that this protagonist has zero depth of personality. That is just so ingenuine, right? If, I don't care about this. You can say that if you want. Just give me an opinion backed by logic that makes sense. That's all I care about. And with the constant resets, even after 12 plus episodes of zero character development, just so fucking wrong. By 12 episodes, you're like what? At the end of probably arc two. You're going to tell me that by the end of arc 1 and arc 2, there's no development in Natsuki Subaru? That's crazy to me. And it's the same whiny, I want to give up mentality. It got boring as fuck. Do you want just a perfect character? That just get like, this is the most relatable, realistic, 17-year-old protagonist that just showed up from Japan into this fucking fantasy world where it's like odds are stacked against him. I think it makes a lot of fucking sense. It got boring as fuck is fine. It's one of the worst animes I've ever sat through is fine. But like, this shit is... Such garbage logic that I cannot comprehend how one could have come up with this take. And then she's just getting cooked. She is just <laughs> getting <laughs> destroyed. And rather than going through the whole comment section, we have a video from Mr. Espiritu Analysis. Let's see what he has to say about this situation. So in this video, I want to talk about ReZero. And mm. I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses as Subaru's character goes. And the reason sure. why I want to talk about this is due to a particular tweet that has gone out. And it mostly started due to another tweet, which was Gigit asking for him saying, I'm looking for your hottest anime takes. And of course, there's definitely been some pretty weak ones and there's been some pretty spicy ones. And one of those is by the notorious YouTube channel known as Smunk Smug Al Ana. It's a fo it, it's it's a VTuber it that has a fox avatar, and yeah. they have like a ice and a fire variant to it. I watch some of their content from time to time. Okay, but I wanted to talk about the tweets that they have made about Subaru, and I won't do my funny voice for this one, though maybe I might a little bit. But it goes as following. Okay. ReZero is one of the worst animes ever that I sat through. When a main protagonist just has zero depth or personality with the constant resets even after 12 plus episodes, there's zero character development and it's the same whiny I want to give up mentality, it got boring ASF. Now, one of the things that I've talked about recently on the channel when it comes to romance animes, and I think this really does resonate with isekais as well, is this whole idea of... Growth doesn't exist because I don't like the growth. Or in another way... Mmm, that's a good take. Growth doesn't exist because I don't like the growth, right? They're completely ignoring the actual development of a character because they themselves just hate that character. That's just disingenuous, right? Just 
whenever you come up with these opinions that are like contrasting to what the popular narrative is, I just want logic to make sense. I love hot takes. I love intentionally rage baiting if there is a good argument to be made, but this is just cheap. This is just stupid. Way to put it is I don't like the direction of the growth so it doesn't exist. Mm. Because to say that Subaru has received no character like development or crazy. depth whatsoever or no personality is just factually incorrect. That's just a disingenuous comment. Like of all the main characters you could have chosen of any anime, you chose Natsuki Subaru to say zero depth or personality? That's like the exact opposite. People that actually watched this show and understood knows that this show is separated from many other shows where many other shows, their perfect main character does not struggle. And even if they do, it's very shallow. Their personality depth is never complex enough. And it's just this guy that just like solves everything miraculously with the harm around them. And there is a time and place for that. In fact, if it's a show with more grounded in comedy, I enjoy that, nar that narrative storytelling. But like ReZero, again, the way that the author is able to make this main character fall to such despair and show such terrible faces and say heinous shit to Amelia like, you have a debt you can never pay back, right? Within the span of season one, I have so much respect for a person that did that, which made a lot of people get filtered out. So many people were so mad due to the death, due to the complexities of this character, this personality trait that's never been seen in most other isekais. And this personality trait I'm talking about is not just the neat, but I'm talking about someone that's actually developing the neat to show their downfalls, to show exactly what's wrong with them, how they grow. Most shows never touches upon this. And the only other show that really does is Mushoku Tensei of the animes that I've personally seen. Because to say has zero depth or personality is just a bold faced lie. It's just Subaru may be insufferable to some. Yeah, for sure he is. Just because he's insufferable doesn't mean he has zero depth or personality. He's insufferable to me too, but I can like separate those insufferable moments and understand his character personality traits and, you know, cheer him on when he's doing well and shit on him when he's doing bad. It's just that simple. He clearly has a personality. You just don't like the personality, so you null and void it. And this is an issue that I see with many people mm. that go into these kinds of shows and they go, well, I don't like this, so I'm going to label it as something that it's not. And I think it's a disingenuous take, but I also yep. think it's more of a knee-jerky defense mechanism because people can't... To be honest, Subaru's Doomer personality was kind of annoying, not gonna lie. I agree. Like, there's a lot of moments where I found Subaru to be very annoying, especially when he's just fucking yelling all the time in Season 2 to Biko. I understand what led up to those moments, right? Quite often, I think internal monologue, what Subaru went through, is forgotten by... Well, not even forgotten, it was never even shown. So a lot of people don't even know, like, why he's acting the way he is sometimes, and people don't try to, like, think beyond. Like, like people immediately just dismiss this character as just being annoying and get mad at them. Which I understand. There is a lot of moments in ReZero where Subaru and Natsuki Subaru just act in a way that just makes no fucking sense to me. Because there's missing monologue and there's also this missing backstory until you get to some parts of season 2. But the more you think about it, the more it actually starts to make sense. And when you realize that Nats like Nagatsuki Tape, the author, is really cooking with this character and is showing tremendous depth and complexities of the personalities of this neat really articulate themselves in a way that actually demonstrates of why they don't like Subaru's personality or the depth that is in him. Now in the early stages of ReZero, and this is something that I've talked about in my old light novel reviews that I've long since deleted because they just were just old, terrible, and okay. a long time lost, was that I talked about Subaru as a character from the early stages of the story of him being insufferable. He is. He's insufferable in the yes, early stages of the story. he's supposed to be. Why? Because he has a main character syndrome issue where he kind of acts as if, like, he is the center of the universe and everything's about him and that he's this all-holy knight and that he's going to solve all the problems somehow miraculously. Mm -hmm. And he does some pretty rookie mistakes, especially with his return by death. He starts acting like he knows the ins and outs of a mansion that he's just started at. Even though, yeah, he's been there multiple times because of the death situation. Yeah, there was like, uh, I guess he's trying to tell you how like detailed it is in one of those runs where he does, you know, fuck up by smashing the Voss. This is the run where he's trying to be super perfect and it is counterproductive. And then he goes, finds the Voss again in a different closet. And Rem's like, how did you know it was there? And it's just like, oh, shit. They don't know that. So to them, they just think he's a spy because, oh, yep. he knows where the, clo where, like, where the closet is, where all these different things are. But most people watching this show doesn't understand that. 
they think that Subaru is just acting weird and irrational. They don't even think about how the people, the mansion, Roswell, Ram, Rem, how everyone is treating, like looking at Subaru. He knows all these things that he shouldn't know. And so Subaru makes a lot of rookie mistakes because he kind of builds this whole idea of grandeur. Mm. But as time goes on, he gets brought down a peg or two. Yes. And is it brutal? Absolutely, he gets brought down a peg or two. Even in the first episode for season three, there is still some lingering feelings inside of him when he's reminded of his idiocracy back in the early stages and how he has changed yes. and developed Growth. since then. There is, tr again, like this person is probably talking from the context of, you know, I don't know how much ReZero they've watched, but if you've watched 12 episodes of ReZero, you, you cannot tell me that this character has no depth or personality. By episode 7, you should have realized that. At the very least by episode 7, well, that's the episode where Subaru, you know, dies by Ram and Rem, right? And then there's the whole straight bet singing, you know, song playing and he jumps off the cliff. Like, that's tremendous growth in there already, but like, how do you possibly view the show like that way? Because she is watching this with the bias, with uh, such a closed-mindedness, right? People have already made up their minds about the show, and everything that the show is telling them is going over their heads because they have a preconceived notion of how the show should be to her, and therefore her worldview is, you know, the accurate thing to other people. And I understand, this, this is an anime opinion. This is not that deep. There's no reason to crucify this person. There's no need to fucking go on a witch hunt. But at the same time, when you say something dis disingenuous and stupid, you're going to have backlash and there's going to be some logic applied there. Now, whether you like that growth or development, well, that's on you. But to say that it doesn't exist is Crazy. just a bold faced lie. That's the now, part I that's get pissing me off. Why they've done that? Because again, it's, it's all about getting those rage baits. It's all about, oh, yeah, I'm going to hit you with a hot take. And that is the point. It's a hot. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, I'm looking for hot anime takes, right? She probably wrote this in a very volatile way. And she's farming. But still, even if you're farming and exaggerating, like, really, bro? Like, of all characters you could have picked, you picked this show? You know what she should have said? She should have dunked on Mushoku Tensei. Yeah? She should have dunked on Mushoku Tensei. And that Rudius is getting away with everything in his new life as well. And there's no development for that character. Fuck that character. That's what she should have said, bro. <laughs> Listen, I love Mushoku Tensei, but if you want to lead in with the hot take and get a lot of fucking people like on board with your fucking narratives, like, ooh, <laughs> especially when ReZero is airing and you're going to get, you know, those brigaders, those tourists, you know, shitting on Mushoku Tensei too, because they just hate MT. I love both. I love both MT and ReZero. I'm going to farm both sides out just as much, but like, god damn, she should have gone with that take. Hot take. It's designed to kind of throw people a headspin. But the thing is, is that when people point out their hypocrisy, some of their like incorrect takes on it, they get very defensive. Like people pointing out the TikTok mindset or the TikTok short attention span, which is mm -hmm. something that I've spoken about. There has been written- I do believe that this new generation of kids, they are, and not even like this current generation, the most recent new generation are actually cooked. Bro, I saw a video about Coco Melon, it's a TV show that is hyper optimized to keep babies hooked onto it. There's like no education is happening. It's just like literal TikTok brain rot, hyper optimized to make you addicted to the show. It's like a literal trucking, it's like heroin to them. They cannot focus on anything else and they get withdrawal symptoms. And then beyond that, there's like fucking, and that example is supposed to show not a form of low attention span, but more of you're watching shit, but like everything is going through you. There's this like, there's like this epidemic of People without any reading comprehension, where because of the way of like, because of the way that they grew up, because of the content that they've consumed without proper fucking education, they're consuming stuff, but it goes through their head, you know? They read, but they don't retain anything. And that's what I'm talking about, the whole Coco Melon Baby situation. The TikTok stuff, that's like short form content. People want quick hits of dopamine, right? People want quick short form content. So when you have like a long comprehensive setup, exposition, and just amazing world building, most people just want the exciting stuff. And that's just, again, think about how stupid the average person is and realize half of them are even dumber than that. It's just numbers. It, you, you can't do anything about it written papers, research done into how IQ has like dropped yep. over the last 
couple of years since the certain virus has gone out, since TikTok and social media has mm -hmm. become a lot more prevalent, the average IQ and attention span of individuals has gone down. Now, like, I don't even think that's a conspiracy theory. My conspiracy theory is that this is all intentional because it's in the government's best interest to keep the population fucking stupid, dumbed down. Why don't? You, why do you think they don't teach you about mortgages or taxes? You know? Why do you think that they don't teach you all the important life skills and teaches you the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell? Because the dumber you are, the better they can fucking manipulate you into voting against your best interest. To think that you're playing team sports, both fucking tribe, right? Divide and conquer. The average population is so fucking stupid that when you don't tip the worker, the server gets mad at you at the working class rather than getting mad at the boss, right? Think about like this. The average, again, just this average population of monkeys divide and conquer. The true ruling class has basically dumbed down the working class and constantly puts them against each other through random fucking social bullshit fucking issues like, oh, transgender bathrooms. Oh, my God. You know, racism. Oh, my God. Like this dumb shit when it's just like, why the fuck is my one bedroom apartment reaching three thousand fucking dollars in Vancouver? Right now, I'm getting off tangent here right now. But anyways, now, their defense was they've read and watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But might I also point out the failing of your understanding is that just because you were or had a longer attention span back then doesn't mean that you still have a long attention span mm. now. The point being made about TikTok is that TikTok has shortened yes. people's attention span. Those that normally had a longer attention span cooked. have shortened it due to the constant pushing of shorts types content. And I don't think it's even like specifically Gen Alpha, Gen Z. I think that millennials definitely they may act like they're better and they think that they're like, you know, more technologically competent and has a better under like uh, education because they're like an older generation. Now, those motherfuckers too, right? You consume short for content. You can also be brain rotten. This is not specific to one generation, but it's definitely more prominent in younger generations. And, and as a person that is a reactionary channel, not myself, they are... The I'm a reactionary channel! Where they do a lot of reacting to people's content. Yes! Uh, yes. I take an educated guess that, yeah, there's a high possibility that their attention span has been shortened. Go fuck yourself. I'm not taking this slander. 23 minute video, 30 minute video, 23 minute video, 40 minute video. This is a fucking nine minute video that I made into a 40 fucking minute video. And remember, these edited videos are uh, shorter. These edited videos are shorter. Two hour fucking ReZero season three episode one reaction. This is a three hour video edited down to two hours, two hours, bro. 23 minute video, 20 minute video, 40 minute video. This keeps rolling. And look at the upload date. Look at the time differences. Now I am pumping out long form content, such comprehensive analysis, criticisms, discussions based on ReZero and many other shows. I will not take this fucking slander, but I know he's not talking about me. I'm joking around. There probably is a lot of reaction channels that does cater towards short form content. My strategy is totally different. I'm not here to appease dumb, stupid children that have a short attention span. They don't have fucking money to pay for Patreon. I am building up an intentionally more mature audience. You don't have to be old enough to be mature, but people that can sit down and truly collect the knowledge in. And I think that those higher IQ people probably does have more money to spend on Patreon. Everything is optimized and intentional. I have a specific demographic that I'm trying to hit. And condense, and I'm not saying the other thing where the IQ intelligence, but I'm just simply saying that their attention span has diminished because of this constant feeding of shorts content. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that- and Remember, it's, we're talking about shorts content right now, not long form content regarding reactions. I'm not mad at him. I'm just making a joke right there they don't watch some longer form content but a lot of content nowadays has mm -hmm. been designed to be very much kind of like yeah a mr beast style video where it's always just like things thrown in your face in this video we're gonna drop seventeen thousand pounds of it's, it's just like oh jesus fucking christ but yeah there is this like new beastification of content everything needs to be boom 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 every three seconds cut 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 like how many fucking videos you see on youtube as well where it's just like brain rot fucking content where every half a second a frame is changing new sound bits keep the fucking stupid monkeys dopamine going up but they're not retaining anything information goes in and information goes out nothing is consolidating in here and while you are reading and you are watching your brain is too fucking fried to interpret to critically think that's why 
We're cooked. <laughs> Future generation, guys. It's looking great for us. Rapidly to keep your attention span going because any moment that there's a little bit of slowing in pace, instantly they lose attention and mm -hmm. focus and they yeah. go, ooh, it's boring now. Yep. And so, yeah, saying that you read or watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy doesn't mean that you still have a long attention span. And also to then turn around and make a tweet saying, well, I don't want to have to go through multiple seasons or mul like 20, 30, 40 episodes of growth for there to be any. Well, the start with Super... Fuck, I missed that fruit fly. But again, I don't think you need 20 episodes of growth. Like, again, by the time that she got to episode 12, right? Like, you should know by now. You're, you're being very disingenuous. If you're saying you got past episode 7, there's no growth, you're just lying. Guru does go through growth within at least the first core. It's just, again, it goes down to the simple factor of you don't like the growth. Yes. Thus, you claim it to not exist. I think that maybe there's this psychological phenomenon where because they don't like the growth or the type of growth or the type of character they are, they intentionally have a filter where subconsciously they don't even acknowledge or recognize the content because they're passively just glossing over it without truly thinking about what's happening. Therefore, one could make this opinion. And I think it does fall to that factor that, yeah, I think there's a short attention span issue. I think people watch these shows and they expect everything to happen very quickly now. People don't want to go through a multitude of episodes mm -hmm. to see gradual development, not just for the main protagonist, but other characters as well. And when there is a large cast of characters, which ReZero does have a large cast of characters. Very diverse. It, it's one of those where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of depth and character development that's going to go for a lot of people. Amelia's got to get her own growth. All the characters that are now in season three that are supporting Amelia and Subaru have got to have their own little moments, which they do within seasons one and two. Now, I definitely can understand why people find Subaru sufferable in me the too. early stages of the story, or even still to insufferable. Me. He is a bit of a bubble. I ain't gonna lie, Subaru still is insufferable to me during certain moments. He does shit sometimes where it just is fucking stupid, like when he ran into the songstress, the, the songstress maniacs, you know, meeting, you know, holding Liliana like that. It's, that's just so fucking stupid, bro, but it's, that's just him. That's his personality trait, and I'm not gonna, like, hold him just... I'm not gonna say, like, this guy fucking sucks, I can't watch this anymore. It's just, like, that's just part of his character trait, and there's moments where I shit on him, and there's moments where I root for him. Bubbly mess. He's very hyperactive. He's always sort of doing his little macho dances and trying yeah. to be all bubbly. But then at the same time, he can be very impulsive and very emotionally driven. Yep. But that's another funny thing is that he is very deep. The personality traits of why he does those actions, sometimes it makes no sense. And you have to truly think about why does that happens. And you'll learn in season two of the backstory why he's like that. Very emotionally driven. When someone pokes at him in the right way, he can get really riled up to the point where he will say things that aren't appropriate or just make things worse, make the situation worse. Yep. Which Arc three. shows that he does have a personality. Many personalities. So again, Very to say deep. that he does not have a personality Fraudulent. is being disingenuous. Yep. Now, the comment of the constant resets, well, I mean, that's the whole point. That's literally just a regression show. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Those resets allow him to discover more of his personality, and not just himself too, but other characters as well. Rem was literally killing us back in episode 7. Now, Rem, after that, has just gushed and just completely become a different side of characters. I don't watch Rig Zero for the regression, but the regression mechanic allows for such extensive um, journey to see the characterization of different routes if, you know, different events happens. Point of the story, he dies and he goes back to a save point. That is the gimmick of the show. If you don't like that gimmick, then you'd be better to say, I don't like the gimmick of the groundhog. Yeah, all you have to say is, you know what, Rig Zero, I don't like it due to the regression. If that's it, that's fine. Like, that's just someone's opinion about not liking this genre of content due to the regression, and they don't... That's it. That's a perfectly valid take. Some people are going to call you stupid for it, but I don't think that's disingenuous. But this is a disingenuous part, right? This is like, you're just lying now. You're literally just fucking rage farming. Whole kind of system or the reset system, that would be fine. Again, they're entitled to their own opinion. I'm simply just criticizing how they're viewing it in a very narrow minded mindset. And I think they're also just being disingenuous in their opinion. They're Agreed. just using blanket statements without any thought behind it because, well, that's the whole point. They're just mm -hmm. getting 
that whole idea of let me use the most basic terminologies and say he's just boring no personality because they can't articulate themselves in a way that represents what they feel i think overall i think the reality is is they just don't like subaru's personality and they don't like the direction of his growth and so yeah then you could like there's a way to say this there's a way to shit on subaru and rezero it's all about the logic involved and how disingenuous is i probably should have made a tweet here shitting on rem man thank you holiday pizza for the two months of uh, tier one man I, I, I should have made a, a tweet saying, like, the average ReZero enjoyer that loves Rem is a fucking basement neckbeard virgin loser that just likes this power fantasy of having a maid that'll be there for you unconditionally no matter what, even if you don't better yourself. They don't understand the point of Rem, and they're fucking delusional. That's what I would have tweeted. And am I rage baiting? Absolutely I'm rage baiting. But you see that there is an angle of a win condition. Right? There's some mental gymnastics in play to shut on the people that sees REM as only a convenient tool rather than, you know, using that and then growing yourself and trying to be a better version that REM wants you to be, right? There's a way to do this in a very articulate way. Trolling, rage baiting, hate farming, it's an art form. And this is just very low tier trolling or rage bait. And if this is your true opinion, then that's even worse, because now you're self-reporting that you're a retard, right? They just go, it doesn't exist. Which, as I said, is disingenuous. Now, also, the mind, the comment of, and it's this same whiny, I want to give up mentality. Well, I'm not an expert in this, and I don't believe you are as well. But the I'm not a, I don't want to give up mentality is amazing. Because not only is it very realistic, right? It's extremely realistic for this 17-year-old kid that has so many problems coming into the show and now has to deal with even more shit. It's just down on his luck. But the whole episode 18 was, it's easy to give up, right? That's what he leads into the conversation with Rem. And Rem says, no, it's not. No, no, it was the other way around. It's, it's like hard to give up, it's easy to give up, and it's all about like, you know, you shouldn't give up. You should always like look for, be my hero. Like, this is an amazing just like build up. But like... And it makes so much lore sense of why someone that just continues to suffer, and they just continue to suffer. The, the only way out is if your soul gets somehow destroyed and you can no longer even use Return by Death anymore. Someone stuck in this constant loop of suffering would totally feel this way. Of dying. I'm, I'm not an expert in it, luckily. And I'm glad many other people that are going to be watching this video aren't an expert in this area as well. But if you watch the anime, you can see that he doesn't exactly die in a graceful manner it's not like he goes to sleep and dies away peacefully oh yeah by the way i've been thinking i, I watched the episode again last night <laughs> i've been re-watching this episode one so many times after i finished stream most mostly just to see priscilla pull out the yang sword again but i think that like there's gonna be an amazing moment where subaru dies by drowning by water for sure there has to be right i bet nagatsuki tape is gonna make like a drowning water scene if it's gonna happen in like the most like realistic and horrific way possible, right? I feel like he has this sick twisted way of enjoying himself when he makes Subaru die in unique ways. And finally that we're in Pristila where like water rises and it's like something like a trap. Like we're definitely going to drown to death and we're going to, and I hope it's like so descriptive on like how we die and like how we can feel like we're dying or something or like drowning. He gets cut in half, smashed, slaughtered, spiked, harpoon, head exploding, poisoned. I mean, we could go on a long list of different ways that he's died. I don't think that would exactly be the most pleasant thing to wake up out of, out of a reset. You know, he gets spiked to death. That pain, the agonizing, the screaming, the anguish. Mm -hmm. And then. And not only that, I thought a little bit more of uh, why Subaru acted the way he did at the end of season three, when he dies through, you know, the authority of wrath, and he's saying, I feel sick, I feel sick, I feel sick. At first, I thought he felt sick because of how, for the first time in a year, he's back to this return by death situation, and it's like, oh no, the trauma is seeping back in. But I thought a little bit beyond that, maybe the I6 part is, he figured, he realizes that he was clapping and cheering on that kid to fall off and die. Like, I don't know exactly how much he retains of that situation. It was like a trance-like state, but maybe after returning by death. And remember, it's like a one simple pass. 
It's like a one pass where you literally were in that situation and in an instant you're back to life. I wonder if it just processed through his head. It's like, oh my god. I cannot believe I was just like applauding and cheering for this child to like get thrown off a fucking building. Right? Something about that probably plays in. Maybe. Boom. Wakes up and goes, oh, now I've got to go through this again and hope that I don't die in the same way. The fear, the panic, the, the level of trauma that would put into you would just be... Honestly, I'm surprised he's still able to cope, but he still tries. And I think that this is an issue with a lot of animes where, like, most authors don't go out of their way to make their characters suffer like this, to have this much growth. And that's why people are so upset at this comment is because this character is intentionally going through so much suffering to learn from his lessons, right? And there is so much development that comes from his suffering. And to say that there is zero depth of personality is just a crazy thing has to push through and through and through but it does show in the anime that he struggles at many points yeah. because he's going and maybe there's also a lot of animes right maybe there's also a lot of animes that she's consumed where main characters never struggle maybe there's some little hiccups but they quickly pick themselves back up and there's this perfect idealized version of a protagonist and they solve everything and through that power fantasy the audience claps and enjoys and says this truly was our avengers I, I feel like there's a lot of those shows that people enjoy and they suddenly see a show where the author is has the balls do such a thing with the protagonist to make him seem in such like in shitty light and to give him growth on top of that. It's just like people don't know how to acknowledge or understand greatness when it's given to them because maybe they've been just fed so much fucking slop through a lot of pain and anguish. I mean, you could argue maybe that he should have maybe been in more anguish and more pain and more trauma for longer. But at the same time, you can't say that he didn't go through it because he did. And that's the thing I, I kind of see is that, yeah, he's gone through those things. Whether you want to say it's gone too fast or not, that's up to you as an individual. But I think a lot of these points being made by this individual are just disingenuous. Mm -hmm. I think they're just kind of throwing a very blanket statement. That, that's just the basis of the argument. It's all anime opinions, but if you're gonna say something, at least make it make sense. And just kind of go in river. And then as soon as any pushback got thrown at them, they got very defensive. Very, very defensive. Also, this whole- I want to read the comments down here after this video, don't worry. The whole idea of Subaru is meant to, supposed to be hated, I don't agree with that. I don't hate Subaru as a character, I just find him insufferable. I think that when we say that Subaru is meant to be hated, there's supposed to be this moment of when we're supposed to hate him, right? I don't think that we're supposed to hate him throughout the entire time, but for sure, I'm not going to sit here and say I've never hated on the character. I will always hate on him when he does something stupid, and I will always cheer for him when he is having a redemption. That's the whole point. Well, at the early stages of the story, because, again, the main character syndrome issue, which is what he develops out of over time. It's not instantaneous, but it does happen over a period of time. Now, of course, we are entering into the third season, which we've had two seasons, two cores each. So mm -hmm. you say, and I, can't, I don't remember exactly what the number count for each episode uh, season is. So it's just, let's just go 24, 24 plus 24. So it's like 48, 48 yeah. episodes of overall growth. I think up to yeah, 50. Subaru has done a fair bit of growth in that period of time. There are other characters as and again, even if it doesn't need to take 50 episodes, like 12 episodes, that's her point. She says after 12 plus, no, 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 I have, by seven episodes in, you should have fucking seen the growth. You're just having your blind lids on. Mentioned before that have grown alongside of him, but you're not going to have instantaneous growth. I mean, you see a lot of live action TV shows that have like six seasons, eight seasons, and maybe they start to show some general growth. And I mean, it's not, not the best example, but Western media seems to get a lot of easy going sort of push of oh you can take as long as you want for the character development and a lot of the excuses are is there are other characters there Subaru and ReZero have a cast of characters that are working alongside and it's a gradual story being built up you've also got to realize that some of the other side characters will develop slower because of some of that issue of Subaru going back to certain time 
save points. So yeah, they might develop a little bit slower compared to him, but he does go through, in my opinion, some quite significant changes. I honestly would feel like it's a bit of a yo-yo as far as his development goes, because he's going through those moments where, yeah, he can be insufferable, annoying, he's going through massive trauma, he's trying to bounce out of it, then more trauma, and just constant back and forth, back and forth. Maybe you could say it's too repetitive. Yeah, yeah, Maybe you could sure. say that, but to but say that didn't. he has no personality... I think is disingenuous, and I think it is... I don't like using the TikTok word anymore because I feel like some people get very worked up over it, and I get why, because it's basically saying that you're an idiot by saying that, and I I don't... An idiot? Nah, bro. Let's rip the word retard. Why are we we suddenly with idiot? I think it's a fair representation because, yeah, I am am a guilty of it as well, where I've consumed so much shorts content that I've gotten to the point where when I watch some long form content, I get a little bit short impatient. I'm like, oh, can we get to the point? I love short form content, by the way. I don't think that short form content should somehow just be canceled. Nah, I love long form content and I also love short form content. So I'll a mix of both. And I think that is an issue when you start consuming a lot of shorts content, you start to expect that same kind of quick paceness in the longer form content that you consume that is trying to build up a narrative or build up the stakes or build up something in general. And you just kind of want it to get to the point. But I think this has become a very big issue. It's been well documented that the general IQ has gone down. The attention span of individuals has gone down. And I think content creators are part of that issue where, yeah, their consumption of constant shorts content and constant pushing reactionary content has created this mindset that... What is up with this guy and this hate for reactionary content? Your fucking 15 minute video is right now for me a 36 and I'm going to read the fucking Twitter and then it's going to be like a 40, 50 minute video. I understand. He's talking about the reactionary like short form content. Right? I'm not talking about long form reaction content. I'm just fucking making a bit out of this because I know my ass. Just look at the fucking channel. Look at the duration of the videos. Understand that it's even edited content and look at the upload pace. Look at the schedule. I'm uploading fucking 10 videos a day. I'm not even lying. We kind of expect things to just happen very quickly or it to be so in our face that we would have to be blind to not notice it, which is kind of funny because some of the remarks to the individual are pointing out that they've basically been sleeping through the anime, which definitely is some good quality uh, probably have. memes there. When it a lot comes of people to probably so have. I'd love to ask a question off to you. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Subaru as a character from the... I fucking hate him when he is being stupid, but that's the whole point. Why am I going to act like I'm just going to coddle him when he's being stupid? When he's being stupid and he's consumed by his sins and he's being just, again, just lowest life form during arc three, I'm going to shit on him. But I'm not going to just like forever hate him. I'm also going to carefully observe what is he going to do? What is he going to learn? And as he redeems himself step by step, I'm going to root along and cheer him on. And that's the fucking beauty of it. You're not supposed to always like, you're not supposed to always hate. You're supposed to see what the fuck is happening on the screen and take it with objective value and come up with your own goddamn opinions. The growth itself, the highs, the lows, the yo-yo effect, do you find him inside? And again, the highs are just as high as the lows are the lows, right? Because we're seeing such bottom of the barrel situation with Subaru and Arc 3, the highs after we subjugate the White Whale and Better Goose, right? It's fucking crazy. If you're always never suffering and you're always just like somewhere in the middle, then it's just mid. Sufferable in the early stages, do you hate him? Like, what is your overall thoughts of the early stages of this? I've already told you what my thoughts are. Here's a spiritual analysis content. Please check him out. Like this video if you have. I'm not done yet, though. Now, shall we play on Welcome School and read some tweets? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. This is the juicy part. There we go. Let's read the tweet responses. Oh, oh, oh. I absolutely love ReZero. I guess it's your opinion. Sometimes it's hard when you follow content creators, but you really hate shows you really enjoy. ReZero does have its depth. It's just hard for those notice, especially it's hard to notice in season one. That's a very valid and level headed take. Why have zero depth in an entire season with 16 plus episodes? It makes no sense to me. That's just a lie. There is a plenty of depth. You're just not noticing it. Episode 15 truly solidified why I didn't like the writing. You 
cannot change this person. You cannot change you, episode 15, the episode that people call as like perhaps the best episode of anime that they ever that's where you were like, "Yup, that's the turning point, bro. Yep, that's it. I'm done with this garbage show. This is fucking mid. Re zero? Re zero out of ten. That's ah, crazy. I think it's bad, but a lot of people love Re Zero and that's fine. I don't care. Sure. But why do you think it's bad? Zero Dead! We are talking about Rudy! Ah, here's some Wishoku Tensei slander! <laughs> Rudy doesn't fit this description either. Beast! <laughs> oh god, another retard. Both of you guys are just talking about shit you didn't watch! And be crazy wrong, Lamont! This is funny, this is hilarious to me. Anytime we're talking about ReZero and someone brings up Mushoku Tensei, it's just the funniest shit. Like, the rivalry exists in their head rent free. No one is talking about Mushoku Tensei, but whenever like ReZero gets mentioned, someone has to fucking put Mushoku Tensei under the bus. I love this shit, bro. <laughs> no character development for Subaru is an insane thing to say. Oh gosh, you're getting fucking ratioed. Yup. Because it takes more than a season to know even one grain of self-awareness. No, the self-awareness literally starts at the end of arc 2. Literally. You got to like episode 12. He literally corrected himself and figured out what he was doing wrong. The self-awareness literally exists there. Don't get why people want to have perfect protagonists. It's so boring. Very true. But it's boring to have the same character with zero defense. That's just a lie. You're lying to me. This is not a true. This is just a... You're just lying. Right? Did you even finish the first season or did you dip? Like, you don't even need to finish the first season. Get seven fucking episodes in. The awareness is there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I guess TikTok. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess TikTok kids nowadays can't get enough. Uh, though, what people call building up your story. Everything has to be amazing, result flawless in less than three episodes. And, I mean, what about Arc 1? Arc 1. Was amazing, resolved, and flawless in less than three episodes. It was. Reinhardt fucking class. Subaru could have gone down the pride route, but he forsaken that. He asked for help. Rather than trying to do everything by himself and prove himself, he decided to go the different route and ask for help. And there is the development right there. There is the self-awareness there. Not a TikTok kid. I sat through the extended trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, and read all of the books. Uh, as a child, because there was actual interest in characters and the motivation. ReZero is a waste of time outside of the cute waifus to look at. The yapping is insane. Oh no. You couldn't make a character your husband. Oh no. Therefore your character bad story bad. If only he was a flawless shown an MC shouting his motivations. It would have been better like Kitty Toe bro. Couldn't think more than three minutes trying to understand a how do you know I'm not gay? Oh Jesus, the plot twist. Holy shit, the plot twist. How do you know I'm not gay? What a weird and insincere ad hominem to attack me over, lol. If only he was the blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Ah yes, the low IQ response of not wanting to invest 25 plus episodes of trying to understand a zero depth character over an average of 8 to 10 hours. Oh damn, that was a fucking spicy plot twist, man. Subaru had no character development? Did we even watch the same show? That's what I'm saying, bro. Because the first season, like the first two seasons, shit, where did we go? Wait, 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 where did we go? Oh no, sorry. I was scrolling too much. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Here we are. Go back, go back, go back. Where, where were we? I'm, I lost myself, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 let me get some. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hell, because the first two seasons were all about character development, hell, you only stopped 12 episodes to make such an ignorant comment like this. And I still say, by the time you got 12 episodes in, the development has happened plenty. Stopped after 12 episodes, picked it up and finished it, which arguably made it even worse because I sat through another 13 to top it off. X D D D D D. Why are you lying? Either she's lying or he just cannot read. This is a she, right? To add, because the schizos are coming out. Yeah, uh, Subaru is supposed to be hated. Okay. For 25 episodes? Really need to hammer that one home, huh? Lord of the Rings, all the books condensed into an amazing movie, has less than 25 episodes of anime runtime, lol. That doesn't really do anything. Like, again, you are intentionally saying that there's no development throughout the entirety of 25 episodes when that's just a fucking flat out lie. By episode 3, there's plenty of development. By episode 7, there's plenty of development. By episode 12, which you claim to have watched by then, there's way more development. That's fucking crazy. Building his character up? 
Showing who he is as a person first, then the character development starts, buddy, it ain't a short story. Reezer is still an ongoing media and Subaru is still developing and his flaws clearly showed up in episode 13 and his development starts at episode 18, buddy. How does this feel, Pete, though, if I'm wrong? This isn't even an opinion anymore. This is just the biggest bullshit I've ever read. The only way to explain this is that it's a rage bait. Damn, bro, you got the whole squad laughing. Any other replies from her? I don't really care about these other comments. I want to see, I don't, like, it's, it's just a bunch of dudes just, like, dogpiling her. But I want to see actual replies from her. But I think that is pretty much it, right? Like, let's see the replies here. And she's a pretty significant, like, content creator, huh? She's pretty big. 24.5k followers on Twitter. Our YouTube is probably big, too. Wonder if there's any other, like, ReZero content. But I, I think that's pretty much it. I, I think this is pretty much it, right? This is the biggest plot twist of all. How did you know that I'm not gay? And that's it. At the end of the day, listen. At the end of the day, like, there's no need to hate on her. There, there's no need to slam dunk her. Everyone is just up in the fucking pitchforks trying to crucify her because of a stupid fucking opinion, which I think is, again, very stupid. Like, she's being very disingenuous. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's just anime opinions, and we're just having fun with it. Just remember, this is all just entertainment. This is all just entertainment. And one last time, please, go give Mr. Espiritu Analysis a like on the video, sub to his channel if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.